This video is going to discuss Rule 67 and that is your expropriation, specifically the second stage. The second stage or the second phase of your action for expropriation is concerned with the determination by the court of the just compensation for the property sought to be taken. Take note that this is done by the court with the assistance of not more than three commissioners. And the order fixing the just compensation, that is a final order. Take note ha, that is a final order. It would finally dispose of the second stage of the suit. Therefore, there is, there is nothing more to be done by the court regarding the issue. Let's go back to our flowchart. We said that your action for expropriation has two stages. The first stage determines the propriety of the action. And the ending palagi ng first stage is either the judge will issue an order of dismissal or the judge will issue an order of expropriation. Let us just say that the judge issued an order of expropriation. Therefore, what is the next step? the court will appoint commissioners. But we also said that your order of expropriation is a final order. Therefore, kung ikaw si defendant, hindi ka happy sa naging decision ni judge, what is your remedy? Your remedy is a is to file an appeal that is very clear according to your section 4. A final order sustaining the right to expropriate the property may be appealed by any party aggrieved thereby. But section 4 is also very clear that even if there is an appeal, still it will not prevent the court from determining the just compensation to be paid. Therefore, the court can still appoint commissioners. The court can still go to the second stage of your action for expropriation even if there is an appeal. After the court appoints commissioners, there will be now a proceeding before proceedings before the commissioners. Ano ba ang purpose ng mga commissioners? Ano ang kanilang primary responsibility? Answer, they will determine the just compensation. And how are they going to do that? They can receive evidence, they can conduct ocular inspections, eh, ocular inspection, and then they will submit report to the court. On the basis of that report, the court can now render a decision or render a judgment. So ito yung second stage ng action for expropriation. Take note ha, balikan natin yung court appoints commissioner. Take note that according to Section 5, upon the rendition of the order of expropriation, the court shall appoint not more than three persons as commissioners. The court shall appoint not more than three persons as commissioners. Ano ulit ang ginagawa ng commissioners? They will ascertain and then they will report to the court the just compensation for the property sought to be taken. Take note, the appointment of the commissioners is mandatory. Mandatory yan kay judge. And ano pa ang requirement for, the, for this commissioners? They must be competent and they must be disinterested. So ito yung requirement ha, competent and disinterested and that the appointment is also mandatory. Wala nang ibang qualifications, wala nang ibang restrictions other than that uh, other than that we mentioned. When the court appoints commissioners, dapat si court will issue an order of appointment. Ano ang nakasulat sa order of appointment? It will designate the time and the place of the first session of the hearing. Ano pa ang nakasulat sa order of appointment? It will also indicate the period kung kailan nila dapat mag-submit ng report to the court. The usual period is according to section 7, 60 days. The report shall be filed within 60 days. 60 days from when? 60 days from the date the commissioners were notified of their appointment. But of course, that is uh, that period can be extended. That is subject to the discretion of the court. 
Copies of the order of appointment shall be served on the parties kay, kay plaintiff and the defendant and parties can file their objections. Kailan sila magfa-file ng objections within 10 days. 10 days from when? 10 days from service. And if merong objections, itong si judge, kailangan niyang i-resolve yung objections within 30 days. 30 days from when? 30 days after all the commissioners shall have received copies of the objections. After the court appoints the commissioners, what is the next step? There will be now a proceedings before the commissioners. But take note ha, that before the commissioners can perform their duties, very clear is si section 6 that the commissioners shall take first an oath they have to subscribe an oath that they will faithfully perform their duties as commissioners. They do that before entering the performance of their duties and that oath must be filed in court. Next, the commissioners are allowed to receive evidence. Evidence may be introduced by either party before the commissioners. Recall Section 3. Ano ulit ang sinabi natin sa Section 3? Kung ikaw, uh, defendant, hindi ka nag-appear, hindi ka nag-file ng answer, si plaintiff ba pwede bang mag-file ng motion? Motion to declare you in default? Answer is hindi. Bakit? Because during this uh, proceedings before the commissioners, you defendant who did not appear, you defendant who did not file your answer, you still have the chance to present your evidence as to the amount of the compensation to be paid for your property as well as your share in the award. That is allowed. You can still present very clear according to your Section 3. Next. The commissioners also shall view and examine the property sought to be expropriated as well as its surroundings and may measure, measure the same up after due notice to the parties to attend. Also, the commissioners shall assess the damages, consequential damages to the property not taken. Speaking of consequential damages, ano ba palagi ang formula when you compute your just compensation that is equivalent to the fair market value and the difference of the consequential damages minus the consequential benefits. That is very clear according to your section 6. This is our basis. You deduct from the consequential damages the consequential benefits that will be derived by the owner from the public use or purpose of the property taken, the operation of its franchise by the corporation, or the carrying on of the business of the corporation or person taking the property. So that is the formula. But ito lang ba ang formula in order for you to compute the just compensation? Answer is hindi because meron pang isang formula. Another formula for your just compensation is your just compensation is only equivalent to your fair market value. Kailan ito nangyayari? Kung ang consequential benefits is more than the consequential damages, therefore your formula is only just compensation is equivalent to the fair market value. After the proceedings before the commissioners, after they determine the just compensation to be paid, then the commissioners should now make their report, otherwise known as the commissioner's report, which can either be a partial report or a full report. Kailan nagiging partial report? When any particular portion of the real estate shall, shall have been passed upon by the commissioners, then the court can order the commissioners to report and render judgment upon such partial report. Otherwise, the commissioners are required to make a full and accurate report to the court of all their proceedings and the proceedings shall not be effectual until the court shall have accepted, accepted the report and rendered judgment in accordance with their recommendations. Still in Commissioner's Report, what did we say again? 
the report should be filed within 60 days. 60 days from when? 60 days from the date the commissioners were notified of their appointment. Very clear yan, dun sa order of appointment. But can you extend the 60-day period? Answer is yes, but that is subject to the approval of the court in the discretion of the court. Next, the clerk of court now has the duty to serve copies of that commissioner's report on all interested parties. And in that um, copy of that commissioner's report, dapat may kalakip na notice that if they are not happy with the commissioner's report, then they can file their objections. They can file their objections within 10 days. Take note ha, dalawa ang objections dito. The first objection is when the court appoints the commissioners, when the court issued that order of appointment, and you are not happy with the commissioners appointed, then you can file your objection. The second objection is when you are not happy with the report of the commissioners, then you can also file your objections. So after the clerk of court serves copies of that commissioner's report to all parties and together with that commissioner's report is a notice that they can file their objection, what will happen next? The court now will wait. The court will wait for the expiration of the 10-day period or even before the expiration of the 10-day period, but after all the interested parties have filed their objections, the court now may, after hearing, act upon the commissioner's report. So there will be now action upon commissioner's report. So maraming scenarios ang pwedeng mangyari. Number one is the court may accept the report and render judgment or the court may recommit the same, recommit the report to the commissioners for further report of facts or they can set aside the report and they can appoint new commissioners or they can accept the report in part and reject it also in part. Let us just say that the action of the court is it accepted the report of the commissioners and on the basis of that report, that regional trial court issued a decision. But the parties are not happy with the decision of the RTC judge. They are not happy with the judgment issued by the RTC judge. So what is your remedy party? You go to the Court of Appeals. You file a Notice of Appeal and Record on Appeal. If still you are not happy with the decision of the Court of Appeals, then what is your next remedy? You go to the Supreme Court. Rule 45. Petition for review on certiorari or appeal by certiorari question of law. We said that you are going to file your notice of appeal and record on appeal. Bakit record on appeal? Siguro naman by this time nakita nyo na that dito sa Rule 67, your action for expropriation, there are multiple appeals involved. The first appeal is that from the order of expropriation, kung saan natapos na yung first stage ng expropriation proceeding, magkakaroon ng order of dismissal or order of expropriation, and since it is considered a final order, then the remedy of the defendant is to file an appeal. The second appeal is from the ending of the second stage of the proceeding, from the uh, judgment or from the decision of the uh, determination of the just compensation, then you can also file an appeal. That is why multiple appeals are involved. That is the reason why you have to file your record on appeal. What is the effect if you are going to file an appeal Dun pa lang sa order of expropriation, the effect is, paulit-ulit natin sinasabi, it will not prevent the court from going into the second stage. It will not prevent the court from determining the just compensation to be paid very clear under Section 4. How about the effect of your appeal from the determination of the just compensation? What is the effect? 
very clear, Section 11, it will not also delay the right of the plaintiff to enter upon the property, the, the up, to enter upon the property of the defendant and appropriate the same for public use. Very clear, si Section 11, the right of the plaintiff to enter upon the property of the defendant and appropriate the same for public use or public purpose shall not be delayed by an appeal from the judgment. So after the termination of the second stage of the expropriation proceedings, yung after termination of the determination of the just compensation, what will happen next? The plaintiff can now enter the property. The plaintiff shall have the right to enter upon the property expropriated and to appropriate it for the public use or purpose defined in the judgment. But is that automatic? Pwede na ba agad pumasok lang si plaintiff sa property ni defendant? Pwede na ba niyang galawin? Answer is no. Kasi naka-premise yan na makakapasok lamang siya if there is now a payment of the compensation fixed in the judgment with legal interest from the taking of the possession of the property. Take note ha, yan ang requirement para si plaintiff can enter the property. Or the plaintiff also can enter upon the property expropriated after tender to the defendant of the amount so fixed and payment of the cost. What if the plaintiff is already in possession kasi nga during pa lang dun sa beginning ng ano proceedings nagpa Nag-file na itong si plaintiff ng motion for the issuance of the writ of possession. And ang sabi natin, your writ of possession is always equivalent to your preliminary deposit. Nagkaroon na ng preliminary deposit. So in that case, therefore, itong si plaintiff will retain the possession of the property should he have taken immediate possession thereof under the provisions of Section 2. What if si defendant hindi nag-appear absent sa mga proceedings o di kaya ayaw tanggapin yung pera? In that case, the same shall be deposited in the court. So ulitin natin ha, only upon payment by the plaintiff to the defendant of the compensation fixed in the judgment that the plaintiff can now enter the property of the defendant. But take note ha, take note na may kasama yang legal interest. Legal interest reckoned from when? Reckoned from the taking of the possession of the property. Bakit may legal interest? Because according to the Supreme Court, kaya meron kang legal interest because that is in the nature of damages for the delay in payment. Because Yung pagbabayad ng government ng just compensation, that is one of forbearance. And the purpose also of that legal interest is to ensure prompt payment of the value of the land and at the same time, it will limit the losses of the owner, the opportunity loss of the owner that can drag from days to decades because of the Action. Alam nyo naman, ang haba ng case, matagal matapos ang mga kaso dito sa Pilipinas. So, that is in effect your damages. That legal interest is your damages. So, if we are talking about legal interest, the question now is how much? How much is the interest? Answer is 12% and then 6%. Kung matagal na masyado yung kaso, then you impose 12% up to June 30, 2013. Basis is yung uh, Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas, MB Circular, issued on 2013. It became effective on July 1, 2013. The rate of legal interest for loans or forbearance of any money shall no longer be 12% but instead 6%. 6% effective July 1, 2013. So, ang interest mo is 12% up to June 30, 2013 and then 6% per annum from July 1, 2013 until mabayaran. 
from the decision of the Court of Appeals, kung hindi ka pa rin happy, what is your next remedy? You go to the Supreme Court. Rule 45, Appeal by Certiorari, Question of Law. But take note that if your issue is the value of the property expropriated, the amount of the just compensation, then that is a question of fact. That is a question of fact. And kung gagamitin mo si Rule 45, questions of fact are definitely beyond the scope of judicial review under Rule 45. Kasi si Rule 45 is only question of law. And ano ang palagi nating sinasabi? Supreme Court is not a trier of facts. Kung meron ng factual findings in the trial court and that finding of the trial court is affirmed by the Court of Appeals, then that is already conclusive in the, upon the Supreme Court. But this is the general rule. Take note ha, ito ay general rule. And of course, kung merong general rule, palaging may exceptions. So what are those exceptions? Number one, when the findings are grounded entirely on speculations, when the inference made is manifestly mistaken, when there is grave abuse of discretion, when the judgment is based on misapprehension of facts, when the findings of fact are conflicting, when in making its findings, the Court of Appeals went beyond the issues of the case, when the findings are contrary to that of the trial court, when the findings are conclusions without citation of specific evidence, when the facts set forth in the petition are not disputed by the respondents, when the findings of fact are premised on the supposed absence of evidence, or when the Court of Appeals manifestly overlook certain relevant facts not disputed by the parties, then the court, the Supreme Court, kahit Rule 45 yan, can decide on this question of fact. The reason why in-include ko dito para ma-remind kayo palagi na yung Rule 45 is only question of law. It is only question of law, hindi pwede sa kay Rule 45 ang questions of facts. Take note also that the determination of just compensation is a judicial function. Basic yan. Determination of just compensation is a judicial function. Bakit it is a judicial function? Because what is sought to be determined is the full, the just, and fair value due to the owner of that expropriated property. Therefore, the only way to to arrive at your full, just, and fair value is to receive evidence. It can only be attained by reception of evidence consisting of reliable and actual data. So if there would be legislative enactments, for example, si Congress naglabas ng batas, or there are executive issuances fixing or providing for the method of computing just compensation, Ano ang effect niyan? It is not binding on courts. They amount to impermissible encro encroachment on judicial prerogative. Ang best na pwede mong gawin dyan sa mga batas or sa mga executive issuances is mere guidelines in ascertaining the amount of just compensation. So take note ha, again, again. The determination of just compensation is a function that is addressed to the discretion of the courts and may not be usurped by any other branch or official of the government. 2006 Bar Exam Question May Congress enact a law providing that a 5,000 square meter lot, a lot that is part of the UST compound in Sampaloc, Manila, be expropriated for the construction of a park in honor of former city mayor Lacson, and as compensation to UST, the city of Manila shall deliver its 5 hectare lot in Santa Rosa, Laguna that was originally intended as a res residential subdivision for the Manila City Hall employees. Explain. So, general rule, the Congress can always enact a, enact a law. But, dapat si Congress, when it acts a law, dapat Congress should comply with the requirements 
set forth in the Article 3, Section 9 of the 1987 Constitution. Private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. So, ang naging problema dito sa problem is, there are two. First, the payment of the just compensation is or must be made in money. Hindi pwedeng iswap yung property nila na 5 hectare lot in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Second, the determination of just compensation is a judicial function. That is basic. The determination of just compensation is a judicial function. It cannot be usurped by any other branch or official of the government. Kung merong mga batas, merong mga executive issuances, fixing or providing for the just compensation, then ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? That is not binding on courts. That, cor that amounts to impermissible encroachment on judicial prerogatives. At best, they are treated as mere guidelines. Just compensation as required by the Constitution is different from the provisional value. Ano ba itong provisional value? Recall this chart. What did we say again? If you want the court to issue a writ of possession, then you plaintiff must make a preliminary deposit. Ang tawag dyan is preliminary deposit if you are a local government unit or if you are exercising the right of expropriation under Rule 67. But if you fall under the Right of Way Act, then the term is provisional value. And what did we say again? Pag meron ng preliminary deposit or provisional value that is equivalent to writ of possession. Writ of possession is equivalent to your pre preliminary deposit or to your provisional value. Bakit? Because ministerial na lang sa part ni court, sa part ni judge, ang pag-issue ng writ of possession. It becomes the ministerial duty of the trial court to issue the writ of possession. No hearing is required. Neither the court will exercise its discretion or judgment in determining the amount of preliminary deposit or provisional value. Very clear, nakasulat kay Local Government Code, kay Rule 67, and the Right of Way Act, how much is the amount. Therefore, the payment of the preliminary deposit or the provisional value as a prerequisite for the issuance of, the writ, of a writ of possession is different from the payment of just compensation. Ang basis ni provisional value or preliminary deposit is iba. Iba sa basis kay just compensation which is the prevailing fair market value of the property. Just to emphasize, your just compensation, it should be made at the time of the taking and the amount of the payment should be the fair and equivalent value of the property. If we recall our Right of Way Act, that is your RA 10752, what is the provisional value again? 100% of the value of the land. In order for the government or in order for the plaintiff to take possession of the property, the law requires that you give a payment that is equivalent to 100% of the value of the property. So if it is already 100% of the value of the property, then hindi ba yan equivalent na ng just compensation? Answer is no. That initial payment, that provisional that payment or that provisional value is not the fair and equivalent value of the property. Bakit hindi siya the full fair and equivalent value of the property? E 100% na nga yan. Ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Take note that your 100% of the value of the land under the Right of Way Act is based on the zonal valuation that is based on the current zonal valuation of the BIR issued not more than three years prior to the filing of the expropriation complaint. And consistent palagi si Supreme Court sa pagsasabi that the zonal valuation 
is only one of the indicators of the fair market value of the real estate. It is only one of the indicators of the fair market value of the real estate. Because when you compute the fair market value, you only you consider only not you consider not only the zonal valuation, but you consider also other matters like for example the cost of acquisition the current value of like properties its actual or potential uses and in the particular case of lands you consider the size the shape the location and even the tax deck so in that case if there is now a provisional value or there was this initial payment or preliminary payment then kung magkakaroon na ng decision as to the just compensation and that decision becomes final and executory, then the implementing agency shall pay the owner the difference between the amount already paid and the just compensation as determined by the court. So again ha, emphasize your provisional value or your preliminary deposit is different from just compensation. Your provisional value it is not a final determination of just compensation and it is not equivalent to the prevailing fair market value of the property. And yung provisional value mo or your preliminary deposit, it has a double purpose. We said this already. It serves as a prepayment if the, if the property is fully expropriated and it will serve as an indemnity for damages if the proceedings are dismissed. You compare that to your uh, just compensation. Your just compensation is the final determination of the fair market value of the property. Let's go back to section 11. Let us just say that you party, you filed an appeal from the decision of the RTC to the Court of Appeals. And during the review of the Court of Appeals, nakita ni Court of Appeals that the plaintiff or that the government has no right of expropriation. In that case, what will happen? The Court of Appeals will render a judgment. A judgment shall be rendered ordering the RTC to restore to the defendant the possession of the property. May kasama rin yang damages. But the bottom line is, there will be now restoration to the defendant of the possession of the property. I-compare natin yan sa non-payment of just compensation. Meron bang mga cases that there is no payment of just compensation? Answer is yes. May mga mababasa kang cases dyan sa Supreme Court na 10 years na ang nakalipas, 15, 57 years, hindi pa rin bayad si landowner ng just compensation. In that case, can the landowner ask for the recovery of the possession of the property? Answer is no. The prevailing doctrine is that non-payment of just compensation does not entitle the private landowner to recover possession of the expropriated lots. Take note ha that dito, the, the reason why he cannot recover possession of the expropriated lots is because yung property niya is ginagamit pa for public purpose. Kaya hindi niya pwedeng i-recover yung possession ng expropriated lots. As differentiated from your section 11, in section 11, nakita ni court na walang private, uh, walang public purpose. Kaya ang judgment is pinapabalik yung possession of the property to the defendant. Here sa non-payment of just compensation, Nakita ni court na meron pa ring public purpose but hindi lang bayad ang just compensation. So in that case, ano ang remedy mo, private landowner? Your remedy is just to file a case in court for the payment of just compensation. But according to the 2005 decision issued by the Supreme Court, kung 5 years na ang nakalipas at ikaw government, hindi ka pa rin bayad ng just compensation, then what is now the remedy of the landowner? The landowner now has the right to recover possession of the property. In cases where the government failed to pay just compensation within five years, five years from when 
from the finality of the judgment in the expropriation proceedings, then the owners shall have the right to recover possession of their property. Ang basis niyan is that is in accordance with the principle that the government cannot keep the property and dishonor the judgment. It is in keeping with justice and equity. After all, it is the duty of the government whenever it takes property from private persons against their will to facilitate the payment of just compensation. If you will be asked number one question sa bar exams, what is inverse condemnation? Wag magpanik ha. Condemnation, the other term is expropriation. Ginagamit si condemnation sa American jurisprudence. Diba yung sabi ko nga sa inyo, ang ginagamit nila doon is order of condemnation and not order of expropriation. But what is inverse condemnation? Ito yung sinabi natin sa previous slide. Kung ikaw landowner, hindi ka pa rin nababayaran ng just compensation, then you can file an action to recover just compensation from the state or its expropriating agency. The purpose here is to recover the value of the property taken by the government. So kung ikaw ay hindi pa nababayaran ng government, take note that the action you should file is an action for inverse condemnation at hindi action for damages. Bakit? Dahil magkaiba yan. Kung hindi ka nababayaran ng just compensation, the basis of that is constitution. Hindi action for damages ang ifa-file mo because the basis of action for damages is civil code, statutory enactments. We'll go now to section 13, the recording of judgment and its effect. Take note that if meron ng decision sa expropriation proceedings, that decision or that judgment must state definitely by an adequate description the particular property or interest expropriated and second, the nature of the public use or purpose for which it is expropriated. And if there is a real property or real estate expropriated, then certified copy of the judgment must be recorded in the registry of deeds of the place in which the property is situated. So, dapat nakarecord yan sa registry of deeds. And what will be the effect if there will be now a record in the registry of deeds? The effect is it will vest in the plaintiff the title to the real estate so described for such public use or purpose. Let's discuss section 9. Take note that in your action for expropriation, the court may determine the issue of ownership. The court may determine the issue of ownership but only for the purpose of determining who is entitled to just compensation. And if there is now a finding of ownership in your expropriation proceedings, what is the effect? Then that finding should not be construed as final. That finding of ownership is not binding on the parties. Diba? Ano ang napansin nyo? This is similar to your Rule 70. This is similar to your ejectment cases. Sa ejectment cases, sa Rule 70, the court is allowed to determine ownership. The court is temporarily authorized to determine ownership. The purpose is only to determine who is entitled to possession. In Rule 67, the rule at the court is allowed to determine the issue of ownership. The purpose is to determine who is entitled to just compensation. And again, ha, again, the finding of ownership is not conclusive and it remains open to challenge through proper actions. Ang sabi nga ng Supreme Court dyan under Rule 67, when the government or when the plaintiff files an action for expropriation, actually, ang ginagawa lang dyan ni plaintiff, ang ginagawa lang dyan ni government is, it is merely serving a notice, a notice to the defendant that it is taking title and possession of the property. And if ever si defendant is asserting his right or, or his title or interest in the property, he is not 
asserting his title or interest in the property to prove his right to possession, but he is merely asserting his title or interest in the property to prove his right to compensation for the taking. Let's go to section 12. What is the general rule? Sino ang sasagot ng lahat ng gastos ng expropriation proceedings? Answer is, all costs shall be paid by the plaintiff. Sino si plaintiff sa expropriation proceedings? That is the Republic of the Philippines. It is the Republic of the Philippines which is referred to as the plaintiff because undoubtedly the Republic of the Philippines initiates complaints for eminent domain. Of course, kung merong general rule, palaging may exception. Exceptions number one is the cost of rival claimants litigating their claims. Or second, if appeal is taken by the owner of the property and the judgment is affirmed in which event the cost of the appeal shall be paid by the owner. How about the fees of the commissioners? Sabi natin, mag a ang court ng mga commissioners and their purpose is to determine the just compensation. So as far as the fees of the commissioners is concerned, then that shall be taxed as part of the cost of the proceeding. That is very clear according to your section 12. And if you read further, Rule 141, Section 16, Ano ang sinasabi dyan? The commissioners appointed to appraise land sought to be condemned for public uses shall each receive a compensation for the time actually and necessarily employed in the performance of their duties and in making the report to the court which fees shall be taxed as a part of the cost of the proceedings.